So, we've always talked about how you can easily create characters with Character Creator, and today, the folks at Revolution have announced Character Creator Headshot version 2. The Headshot version 2 is a brand new version of the amazing Headshot Character Creator add-on, which allows anyone to create 3D models based off an image. But with Headshot version 2, users can now bring in a 3D scan, a sculpted model, or even scan themselves, and convert this to 3D digital avatars. The beautiful thing about Headshot version 2 is this isn't limited to realistic characters, but as well you can use this for very stylistic humanoid characters and the process to this is as simple as aligning, wrapping and refining your model and that is how easy it is for you to create your own models. For sure we're going to do a simple walkthrough of how this works and for those who like to get started with this, there's going to be a link in the description that will bring you right here where you can check out Headshot version 2. And with that said, let's take a look at how you can work with Headshot version 2. So with Character Creator open right here, if you already installed Headshot, you would notice that you have it right here and you also have it right here. So if we click on Headshot version 2, you would see that we have Headshot version 1 and Headshot version 2. Version 1 simply deals with image to 3D model which we explained earlier and version 2 deals with mesh. Now once you click on mesh, you would see the meshes that this supports. So for you to get started, what you need to do is to load in a mesh. Now the mesh which we're going to be working with was gotten off Sketchfab and I'm going to put a link to this in the description. Now with this mesh which we have here, of course if you scroll all the way in, you will see that it's pretty small. So to get things going, I'm going to scale this and position it exactly how we want it to be. It's paramount that you get the position right, but for scaling, this is something that you can overlook. But because we like to get this to match closely to the proportion of the model that we're working with, we're going to simply scale this by a certain number. The next thing which we need to do is to click on Start Head Generation. Now once you do that, this is going to pop up a new window. Within this window, you find the reference mesh and the scan. So the first part of this is to align it. And we have to align based off points. The total number of points that you get to work with range from 24 all the way to 35. And for you to start adding points to this, you can simply navigate across the model and you can start placing points. So in this case, we might want to put a point here as one and we can proceed to put another point possibly two and three and all that. But by default, the folks at Revolution have also made an auto dictation. So what this does is automatically, it takes a look at the model and it dictates where it believes that this point should leave. But in most cases, you might need to go in and actually position this exactly how you want it to be. So once you have this going, if you like to increase the points to 35, say for example, you would like to capture certain regions of the face, Yes, you can. So you can set this all the way to 35 and use the points. Just simply make sure that each point is corresponding with the reference point on the model. Now, once you have this ready, the next thing which you might want to do is to click on Head Gen AI. So this would load us into a new page with a low poly wrap of the model and an applied diffuse texture. Now, from this point, you can choose to keep some parts and you can choose to discard some. So we can choose to keep just the face if we like to keep this. If we like to keep the whole head, we can also do that. You can choose to have the whole head, which has to do with the neck and every other part selected. But in this case, we're just going to keep this particular part, which is the face. Now, at certain points, you might want to preview this against several things. Say, for example, you want to see the topology guide. You can also see that. If you like to preview this with wireframe, or maybe you just want to see it normally, you can do all of that from here. You can also show some hidden parts. And this is exceptionally good if you have sections you might want to select and grow. Click to select and we can click some more to select these ones. And once we're done with them, we can click on grow to grow all of them. Now, once we have them fully grown how we want them to be, we can proceed to click on show selected. Now, these parts will be retained with our model. We can now go ahead and turn this off and we now have the part which we would like to keep. If there are more parts you like to keep as well, you can also go ahead and select those ones too. And once you're happy with the results you have, the next thing is to refine the mesh. So once you click on refine mesh, what we would get is a set of sculpting tools which you can use to align our mesh properly. The reference mesh and the scan mesh will be placed one to one based off the align point and head generation and what we need to do is to use the four brushes that is made available here to make sure that they are projected properly. And the brush includes the move, smooth, clone, and also project. You can turn on symmetry if you like to work with these. And if you right click and drag all the way out, you can increase your brush size. So for this, what we would like to do is to simply project. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click all the way out. And then we can project these 
back to where we would like them to be. You can also use the move brush, which you can scale all the way up and move certain parts. And once you're working on these, one thing which I would simply suggest is don't spend too much time trying to get the back of your model. The most part which you need to work on is the head and the neck. So these brushes are basically the brushes you want to work with. If you like to keep the neck size or the head size, you can simply turn this on or off. And once you're done, you can proceed to click on attach to body. And this brings up a dialog box, which automatically suggests the gender and then suggests the mask type. So if you like to fiddle with any of these, you can do that. Furthermore, you would also notice that the diffuse and the normal has automatically been set to source mesh, which is our default scan model. We're going to keep the texture size and click on generate. This automatically proceeds to create a fully functional 3D model that we can animate, dress up and do whatever we like with it. And you can see what we have here, that we have a perfect representation of the model that we're going for. Other things that you can do includes playing with the morphine and you can also use skin gen or even apply some very interesting hair features to it. You'd also notice that Headshot version 2 pushes to be exceptionally adept at collecting minute details which includes matching the full character skin tone to that of the scan model, the pore size, wrinkles and even micro expressions. And of course if you like to test animations with this you can proceed to test your animations and get started making your next virtual character for your games, animation and even films. Now some other things that you might want to know is if you do have problematic regions, for example you're working on a character and this character doesn't have a complete scan with headshot version 2 you can approximate the other parts of the model and you can use the refine mesh section to actually get it to work how you want and for problematic regions there are hair mask eyelid mask mouth nose tree and neck mask which are simply within reach and they help you clean up and produce a more unified seamless texture blend across your entire model and for those who prefer to retain mesh hair especially for games or optimized characters you can simply sculpt and retain your mesh hair Artists can also have access to making textureless models to check the forms of the normals and either send off the model to get sculpted or painted on or simply use texture projection to apply color information on the model. And for sure, you can use tools like Skin Gen to create a more authentic look to your character's look and feel. So, this is it. For those who like to start creating some amazing characters or probably you like to create your own scan and create your own digital avatar and use it for your games, animation or films, then you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can check out all of this. Additionally, there is a free CC phase-based topology UV guide which is pretty informative and useful to all regardless of the tool of choice that you're working with. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. A huge shout out to the folks at Relution for making this possible. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.